We give it some high fives around the room. All right, God is good. That's a little bit. Let's see a little bit of energy in this room, but that's not enough. Try to get everybody to say, God is good. I'm hearing more from the dudes, man. From the that's usually surprising. Usually well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like in general, we've had a lot of the guys more, and there's been a lot more of that energy. Um, how's everybody feeling today? Y'all ready? Hey, who who has this whole week back in school before before we get going going? Like you have this whole week, meaning from Monday to Friday when y'all get back in there. You got Monday to Wednesday, Monday to Thursday. What you got? Like? Thursday, Thursday. What about you, Josh? Wednesday. So some people off Wednesday. Some people off Thursday. Is a couple mixture of all of that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Again, God is good. Now I need some energy. What's up? Y'all sound dead today. God is good. There we go. There we go. All right. So, so some new people here tonight. There's some people that've been here. Um, there's some people who've been back after a while. Shouts out to my boy. He's like front row and center. How you doing, bro? Good. 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 Um. So for those that have been here. Uh, before you realize we are in a different room than we usually are in. Um, for those that's your first time, well, usually we have this room, they can come, they play Xbox, they chill in here, but we usually don't do like our topic and all of that in here, Nobody right? So, um, but I don't know, what do y'all think? Do y'all, do, what do y'all prefer? Should go back to the other room, should keep this vibe? What do y'all think? Y'all like this? Y'all like this? Y'all just like the comfortable seats that y'all could just kind of lay back in. All right, all right, cool, I hear that, I feel that, I feel that, I feel that. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to somebody next to you. Turn to somebody around you, next to you. Look them in the eye. Like, you know, like, like if you was like on a basketball court or if you was like, I don't know, somewhere, you know that intimidating look when you about to play somebody? Come on, John Carlos, I know you know everything about this. You know what I'm saying? So you look at them and I need you, everybody, repeat after me, say, whose house is this? That, yeah. Some of y'all looked at me mad confused. That's like, you know, so old school basketball players used to do that. They used to, be like, they used to like dunk on somebody and be like, yo, whose house is this? So I need y'all to turn to somebody. I need that energy. So turn to somebody, say, whose house is this? Am I, no, nobody's going to say. So my man actually literally just dunked on you. That's messed up, bro. Are you, how you going to get him back for that? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, so let's try that one more time. Turn to somebody. Turn to somebody around you. Turn to somebody different than who you looked at before. Now repeat after me. Say, whose house is this? My mom's house. What? You, your, your, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> she prayed. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, actually, that's also the thing that parents say, though, to be honest, right? They be like, you don't do what I say. I'm the one. This is my house. I pay. You do, do you pay rent? Right? They do all that stuff. Right? Whose house is this? This thing. Oh, this is my room. Do you pay for that room? You know what I'm talking about, right? Um, they, you can pay for rooms. You can rent rooms in New York City, especially. Bro, trust me. You you ain't you ain't grown up. You ain't lived yet. It, it exists, especially here in New York City. All right. So everybody, when we say house, everybody say casita. This is the series week three we've been in. Um, we're going to wind up taking a break after today um, from this series because we got a couple other things coming up. Uh, next week, we have an encounter night. Um, it's Good Friday. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more for those that, again, it's your first night. Um, the week after that, um, y'all may have seen this. Hey, everybody look at me. So, so look, let me walk you out through the next three weeks. Sorry, usually my setup is different, so I feel... So, all right, so look, next week, we have Encounter Night. So, um, if you haven't been to one of these, um, usually they're in the church. This time, it's not going to be in the church. It's going to be in he over here um, for Good Friday, specifically for y'all. While all the older people have all their different prayer services and different things that are going on all throughout the day, we have something for you guys to help welcome y'all into what it really means on Good Friday. So, we have that next Friday. Then the following week, some of y'all have already given me forms back and stuff. 
We are going to Trampoline Park. We're going to launch. Everybody say launch. launch. All right, so that's going to be dope. Um, this is that following Thursday, the 21st. All right, so take that with you if you haven't gotten one already and so forth with that. Then the week after that, we're going to be in the gym. So we got a game night. Um, some of y'all be playing ball. Some of y'all playing volleyball. Some of y'all playing soccer. Um, I'm going to try and do like we used to do in the past where we had like the TV and stuff set up. If y'all do want to like play on the Xbox or the Switch or whatever on the thing, we'll set that up as well. Because um, last game night, we was packed. And um, we just want to make sure there's more stuff for the people to do. All right. So, Casita, this is what this is. If you haven't been. Who here has seen the movie Encanto? Okay. Pretty much everybody in the room. Who here as at least has like, is like tired of hearing the songs and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't here now one of them <laughs> all right so look so this series is it's not necessarily a it's not necessarily about the movie i mean we're drawing some themes and from the characters and stuff from it it's inspired by the movie but the idea the house um we're thinking of three different houses, and we'll get to that in a minute. But we have this scripture. Um, let's see if this is side of the wall. Is it going to be like the other room, or is it going to be different today? All right, there we go. All right, um, Christian, pull that up on the screen. Again, this is our thing. This is our, our, our scripture that holds this all together. So everybody repeat after me. Say, my people. Say, my people. My, you know, like you would say, like, yo, when you walk in the room, my people. All right. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. So um, who here wishes they had a place where nobody would bother them? Like you could do whatever you want. You had everything you want in that space. It was your restful spot. I think everybody does, right? Make some noise if you want that spot. Okay, thank you. And, I, and, and I've repeated the same thing all three weeks. And still, everybody's like, yes, I wish I had that place. Um. We've talked about three homes. Say three homes. Our body, so our physical body. That's a home we live in, right? We live in our own head. We live in our own physical being. Um, this earth is our home, right? Especially the homes we live in. And then heaven is our ultimate home. How many I wish that, um, like, okay, in your mind, what you think of when, when you think of heaven? What you think of, bro? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, do y'all think heaven has pain? No. Y'all think heaven, there's annoying people? No. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> you think heaven, there's tears? And I need you to cut back to the to this camera screen. Um, nah, it's complete joy, right? It's that home that we all want. And, we, and how many of y'all wish... At this place, the homes we live in here, our bodies and the homes we live in actually looked a little bit more like what we wish heaven was like. Show of hands real quick. All right. Now, I know some of us have skewed ideas of what that means, um, but for sure. So, all right. On all the pictures of this, we say that this is a series on trauma and healing. Anybody know what trauma is? What's trauma, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm going to hand you the mic for a second. Just... Trauma would be like a memory that was either that either scarred you or like has left a very awful impact on you and your life. All right. How many I agree is something that like it affected you in a negative way. That that's a pretty good understanding. I want to um I'm gonna read the actual definition so we have that as a reference point. But everybody can look at the screen. You can pull that up there again. Christian. Um, so I can't even read it on there. All right, so it says, a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. How many of y'all have had one of those? How many of y'all could say that's happened just walking through the streets of New York? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And many of us could say 
that's every time I walk inside my house. Deeply distressing and disturbing experiences because my family cray cray. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I mean, I think the people in the movie relate to that. So, all right, um, Christian, come back to me for a second. So the past two weeks, we've played games involving balloons. If you look at our Instagram page or on the Paris YouTube, you can see the game we played last week. Um, y'all were playing the game with balloons here. Um, but do y'all agree, uh, what makes a balloon? Helium, air. Someone, what'd you say? Oh, well, yeah, rubbers would hold it together. Yeah, you're right. But so, so um, this little, this little machine, I got it uh, just because it makes it easier than trying to do it one by one by one. We have the machine that blows it up. So check this out. So if I took this balloon, right, and I put it here on the machine, right? So I'm not gonna tie it. I'm not gonna tie this balloon just yet. But right here, if you were to just like take your keys and start applying pressure to it, what would happen to it? It popped. Do we agree? So pressure makes the balloon pop, right? From the outside. But what would happen if I just kept the air going? What would happen if I just kept the air going and going and going? Eventually, the pressure from inside of it also would make it pop. How many of y'all agree? So, look at me. Some of us have traumas and experiences that affect us on the outside. There are pressures that crush us, trying to make us pop. And if we're honest... Some of us, it's actually that internal pressure. Sometimes there's nobody really asking you to do something. Maybe they asked you to do something in the past. But really, it's the pressure that you're feeling from within that's making you feel like you're about to explode. How many have been in that experience before? Yeah. So somebody in, somebody in the movie um, who's very much like this, um, anybody know her? What's her name? I like, <laughs> you say terrible. terrible. She, she said it with her accent. I love the whole difference. Um, so her name is Isabella. Can you show that to the people, Christian? You have to hit whatever that is that popped up. Um, so Isabella, now I'm going to be honest with y'all. When I first watched the movie, this girl got on my last nerve. How many of y'all, same experience? Like, I was so annoyed by this girl. You can cut back to me. So, any of y'all know people that they're just, like, too perfect? They're, like, too smiley? They're, like, too joy. Y'all have everything. Everybody, your parents do everything for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you, you get everything you ask for. And you just sit in there tight in the corner looking at them like, ooh, I wish. Mm. How many, yo, we all, we pretty much all, ooh, ooh. How many of y'all, and whether you are, you really recognize or believe that you're one of those, do people look at you like that sometimes? Sometimes, especially, so sometimes it could be like, you know, financially speaking, like if you're somebody who's able to get the fresh new kicks first. Or sometimes it could be like if you're the one who makes it on the basketball team first, they may look like, man, you're the perfect one, you know? Or if you're somebody who actually has a family that's together, because let's be honest, most of our families are broken. Sometimes they look at you like, you got it all together. Meanwhile, they don't know that your family's a hot mess too. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and when I, as I started going into the movie and I started realizing, especially later on in the movie, um, there's something about Isabella that I think we all have a little bit of. Some of us more, some of us less. Being a people pleaser. Huh? People pleaser. So what this means is you're trying to make everybody else happy, and sometimes you put yourself last. And sometimes, 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 um, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, you're trying to make your friends happy by doing the things they want you to do and lo and behold, you're like, man, I ain't really with that. But, you know, I'm going to just kind of go along. I'm going to rock with it. 
Sometimes that's being a people pleaser. Sometimes it's your parents. Sometimes they just got this pressure on you, and you're just like, man, I got to do that. How many of y'all have been in that situation before in some way, shape, or form? Right. So there's actually, um, remember, this is supposed to be, I, I had said in the beginning we were going to go into a little bit of the mental health of some of this stuff. So I, des I decided to, look, people please is kind of the, the term, and you, you could pull it up so people could see that directly, Christian, and then cut right back to me. Um, that's the term that we call it, but the actual, like, mental term, everybody say this, say socio sociotropy. Sociotropy. Say it again. So what... People pleasers, this is actually like a, a medical doctor that writes about this and how this works in their mind. You can show me again, Christian. Um, people pleasers are known for doing whatever it takes to make other people happy. While being kind and helpful is generally a good thing, going too far to please others can leave you feeling emotionally depleted, stressed, and anxious. People-pleasing involves putting other people's needs instead of your own. People-pleasers are highly attuned to others and often seen as agreeable, helpful, and kind. However, people-pleasers have trouble advocating for themselves, which can lead to harmful patterns of self-sacrifice or self-neglect. Um, how many of y'all got, like, especially, let's be honest, um, some immigrant families, a lot of times happens, um, you got that mom, you got that Theo, you got, I don't know, your, your dad only, you got somebody who they'll work four days straight on 30 minutes of sleep. Like they, because they want to make sure that everybody else is taken care of. And the next thing you know, it's Saturday and they're flipping out on everybody just because they're so dang tired. How many of y'all, similar situation, maybe you done. You know, you got school, you got practice, you got this, that, third thing, and you, you put yourself in a similar situation. Um, it's something called sociotropy. It's feeling overly concerned with pleasing others and earning their approval as a way to maintain relationships. So one of the things they realize, and I'm not going to read all of this because there's a whole bunch, and y'all could, I, I try to give this as tools. Y'all can, like, go research this a little bit more. Um, because let's be real, if you're on social media, I believe everybody on social media has a little hint of this. Because let's be real, the reason why we post stuff is because we want other people to see it. If we take a picture dressed a certain type of way, we know that's because, and we post it, it's because we want other people to see it and we want the approval from that other person. If we take a picture in a certain place with certain items, we're doing that for the approval of other people. You have a little hint of this people pleasing, sociotropy in you. You know what I'm saying? And what, what they realize is these people have a difficulty saying no. They're preoccupied with what other people think, and they feel guilty when they tell other people no. Um, so, so, like, this comes from, like, if you have friends or family, they're like, yo, man, like, you know, and they think it's cool to, like, pop bottles or, like, do this, whatever the case is, and you, and you just do it, or smoking or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? Um, and... Uh, you do it for the likes and the views and the comments on it. Knowing that that moment after the high, after the drunk, after the whatever, isn't really that good. You know what I'm saying? That next morning, that next day, the time, you know, the moment you distance yourself from your family or whatever from it, like that's all coming from, man, you was trying to people please and you got addicted, you got caught up in this thing, but you could have just said no. And it's, it, it's actually, like I said, this is actually like a thing that people struggle with. Um, we fear that turning people down will make them think that you're mean or selfish. You agree to things you don't like or do things that you don't want to do. You struggle with feelings of low self-esteem. And I don't care how many, all these rappers that be bragging, the more a person brags, the less their self-esteem is. That's just facts. Um, and we can just kind of just keep going down the list. What usually causes this is from like roles, a lot of times it's neglect from their family. Um, particularly a lot of times it happens with parents. They wind up getting poor self-esteem, they're insecure, and they have this perfectionism in them. Like so these experiences kind of like shape them in many ways. All right, y'all with me? Y'all with me? No, that's a lot of information in that little spot. But um, how many of y'all hate fake people? 
y'all don't like when people act like something and they ain't really about that life. <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, it even happens here in the church. And lately I've been a part of a lot of conversations of people who are in leadership and behind closed doors has been like, man, that person is wild. They just been putting on a show for everybody. Romans 12, Christian, pull it up. Romans 12 says, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. In 1 John, the, letter, the first letter of John, chapter 3 says, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed or in truth. All right, come, come back to me. So that first part, how many of y'all wish everybody would be genuine with you? How many of y'all find it hard to be genuine with other people sometimes? Let's be honest. How many of y'all wish the word, not in, in word and talk, but in deed and truth? How many of y'all wish people would stop talking about it and actually be about it? You know what I'm saying? Like... So that applies to all these areas of our life. And I put at the end, Matthew chapter 6, this is a whole time where Jesus is he's calling out people who just basically being fake. They're not really, they're putting on a show for everybody to like them. But they're not really about that life. Um, <clears throat> if y'all want to go into that entire chapter. Anybody was with, man, a lot of y'all were not with us last year when we were completely online. I wanted to play this video, but I'm, I'm just for the sake of time, I'm not going to. Um, shouts out to Alani. If you happen to like just tune in at some point, um, that'd be dope to just connect with you, Alani. But Alani um, is one of the people that used to come, and she wrote this poem um, called Behind the Mask. And how many of y'all happy that there's no more mask mandates? You know what I'm saying? Y'all like, man, you don't know? You're kind of in the middle. Some... Okay. Um, some people are in the middle about it. But like, we have the literal mask that we were wearing all through COVID. And then we have so many people that are continuously living behind masks every day just in how they act and present themselves to other people. And that kind of poem just played off of that. Um, now, going back to Isabella, when I first, remember when I said when I first watched the movie, oh, when I first watched the movie, I was annoyed with her. Then if you see it later on, she winds up like finally, you know, even, even um, Mirabella is like, yo, I don't want to talk to her. I ain't dealing with her. She, man, she's annoying. Ugh. And finally she gives in and she's able to let go when she sees the real side of her, right? And um, I start realizing like, oh, man, how much pressure is it to have to keep up that front all the time? I was watching this video on YouTube uh, like yesterday because I'm like into a lot of the fitness stuff. And it was about this lady um, I forgot her name, um, one of these like social media people, whatever, she went on vacation, check this out, she was on vacation, and she wanted to go to the beach, but she starved herself for two days, because she knew that people would be on the beach, because she's so well known, trying to take pictures of her, and the whole day she had to walk around like this, with her stomach sucked in, can you have fun on the beach if you ain't eating two days and your stomach is sucked in? Is that a vacation? Think of how much pressure it is to be in that limelight all the time. So sometimes, yo, hear me out. I don't agree with a lot of things celebrities do, but I also understand that they're humans and we put a lot of pressure on these people to not be human. And that's why they have these breakdowns. You know, now, some of them, it's their fault because they don't say no and they kind of fall into it. But a lot of it is also our fault because we, we feed into that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so at the end of the movie, there's this song that they sing. I am not going to sing this song. Um, y'all, you already said y'all kind of annoyed with it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? At the end of this movie, there's multiple songs all throughout the movie, um, just, just to kind of give some context for it. Everybody's so focused on the gift, on the miracle, on the different things that they could do, and then finally everything falls apart, 
And the grandmother comes to realization like, man, this was all a gift. What am I doing with this? And they start singing a song, especially to Mirabel. And then the house is built back up. He says, the miracle is you. Everybody look at me real quick. If your parents, if your teacher, if your coach, if your friends, if, if they never said they valued you, if they never like put aside time for you, if they never focused on you and made you feel like, man, you know what, what I care about doesn't really matter. Hear me out. You matter. You matter. The miracle is you. It's not what you can do. Because a lot of times our schools, our parents, also make it feel like it's all about what we can do. Oh, did I take care of school? Oh, did I excel and do this? Oh, did I wear the clothes? Oh, did I post and get this many things? No. You as a person are enough. You know how I know you're enough? We're about to celebrate in this up and coming week how God, who stepped out of paradise, stepped out of heaven where everything is perfect, to step into our drama and our mess, was stripped, beaten, and mocked, and died on a cross for love for you. And we've heard that story before, but do we believe that story? Do we believe, okay, we, 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 do we, we believe sometimes God, he, he died for us. Do you believe God died for you? And it's my prayer that tonight, through this week, in this season, that you guys will start to understand and experience that a little bit more. And look, hear me out. If your parents never give you that time of day, Hunt me down, like, for real. I got a million things on my plate, but I put everything in my power to put aside the time that I need to for you guys. Y'all hear me? And not only me, there's a whole parish staff here, from Vanessa to Father Brendan to everybody that's here. The miracle is you. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. God, we thank you um, for us being able to gather here tonight. Different space, more people, more ideas flow, more communication, more, more everything. God, we just ask for more of you. Um, help us to see ourselves as you see us, Lord. Because the people in our lives sometimes don't treat us like that. Heavenly Father, we ask that your grace to pour us out on us in this room. And that this week, this holy week, we get to understand the miracle was us. That we'll stop people pleasing um, and we'll just start receiving that love from you and let everything flow from there. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. A few questions to think about. If you want to write them down on your phones, whatever. It might take like another minute or two. Even if y'all want to just only do one of these questions, you can pull them up on that side. Do you really know how you're loved by God? How can we and I mean here, like our group, our church, our parish, so forth, help you and people experience more of that love? And what are some places to be more authentic in front of everyone else? Just thinking from tonight. All right? So that'll bring us to the end of this part. Um, again, we'll take some time just to chill, hang out. Thank y'all again. Next three weeks is very different looking. Like I said, we have... Our encounter night, boom. Then we have our trip. Then we have game night. And then we'll continue with 
this series, but it might be a little bit of a flip once we come back in. All right? Thank y'all. And, yeah, you can cut on that side, man. And um, I'm going to pull this question up on this.